Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how to simplify chord changes for better soloing, and also how to practice more by practicing less. Actually, I do wanna share one random thing with you right off the bat. I made a couple of beats recently and posted them on Instagram. I'll play one of them for you uh, right now. So check it out, and if you like it, feel free to uh, go check out the other one on Instagram. So here it is. So that's a quick update about me. Happy New Year to everybody out there. Hope you guys are doing well. And now as we jump into the main part of this video, I do wanna to thank today's sponsor, and that is Skillshare. You guys know I've been talking about Skillshare for a long time, and that's because I've been loving them for a long time. And if you guys don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes. They've got classes in design, business, some music stuff. It's really across the board. Sometimes I even go on Skillshare just for inspiration. You know, I like this guy, Aaron Draplin. He's a graphic designer, and he has really great classes on the platform. I don't even do that much graphic design, but he's just a super inspiring guy, super creative, and it really makes my work better just by sort of of watching him do his thing. And if you guys have goals for 2019 that involve building up skills for whatever it is that you create, then you gotta go see what Skillshare has to offer because there's a pretty good chance there's a class there that can help you amp up your game. Also, it's super affordable, only 10 bucks a month, and that gives you access to everything, all 25,000 classes. But best of all, the first 500 of my subscribers who click on the link in my description below will get two months free of Skillshare. So get to it, click the link, check it out, and get learning. By the way, Get Learning is not their slogan. I just came up with that. So Skillshare, if you dig it, you know, we can talk. Okay, so let's talk about simplifying chord changes in order to improve your soloing. This is super important for beginners, intermediate, and advanced players alike because so much of what's in front of you when you're improvising or what's in your head, you just don't need. So many of those chords, you just don't need in order to make a good solo. So especially when you are looking at a tune for the first time and you don't have you know, the ability to really shed the thing. Maybe you're going to a rehearsal or a performance and you have to play the solo and there's all these chord changes in front of you. What do you do? You simplify, you look for the broad strokes. Let's use In a Sentimental Mood as an example. It's a real classic and it has a lot of chord changes in it that we don't really need to look at right away. So let's look at the chord changes here for In a Sentimental Mood. We have D minor, D minor major seven, D minor seven, D minor six. A lot of extra information in here that we don't need. Let's just think of this as D minor. Same thing for the next two measures. We're just gonna think of that as G minor. Then we have uh, D minor again. Here's a D9 sharp five. Don't even worry about that chord. That's a transition chord. What we need to look for are destinations, not transitions. So we have different kinds of harmony here. We have destination harmony and transition harmony. Your cadences, that's more of your transition. And then your resolutions, your, your arrival points, those are your destinations, right? So you wanna identify those arrival points because that's where you wanna focus your attention. This D9 sharp five here, that's a transition chord. We wanna ignore it for now. What we need to know is where is it going? And it's going to G minor C7 F. Now that's a classic two, five, one and F. So I'm just gonna think of all of this area right here in the key of F, just F major, that's it. Then we have a two, five, one back to the D minor. Again, just gonna think about D minor. Now what's really cool about this is that D minor and F major are super similar. So that narrows down the information even more so. It just makes it easier to think through, especially if you're working with scales and things like that. Like you could literally take the pentatonic scale, the D minor pentatonic scale, which is the same as the F major pentatonic scale, and throw in the G minor pentatonic scale, and then suddenly you're able to improvise over the first eight bars of this tune. Let me demonstrate.
major pentatonic. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to stop right there. So when I went into the bridge there, I was just focusing on D-flat major pentatonic. If you spend some time with those pentatonic scales, you can really get a lot of mileage out of them. It's just five notes, but there's a lot of different ways to play them, a lot of cool little licks and lines that you can play with them and make it sound really, really great and make it sound like you're actually making the changes as well because in a sense you are. You're just focusing on the broad strokes. All those transition chords that I was talking about, you know, the D9 sharp five, the uh, the two five ones that are in there, those are great, that adds a lot of color. But if you you don't have a good handle on the lines in which to color, then you don't really have anything. So once you get the skeleton down, once you get the broad strokes together, then you can start working with that transition harmony to only further color the harmony and color your solo. And that might sound something like this. So that's all well and good, but I don't think it's that much better than what I did before. I mean, there is more color there, but I don't think it's a world of a difference. So my point being that you can get really far with just those main destination points, figure out what those are in whatever tune or whatever solo you have to play and see what you can do just working with that material. You can just focus on the pentatonic scales. You could focus on the first five notes of the scale. There's a lot of different ways to go about this, but the conceptual way, the conceptual idea is focus on the main skeleton of the tune before you start working with all the extra chords. You don't need that right from the get-go. Let's now switch gears once more. I want to give you a little tip about practicing and how to practice more by practicing less, which is kind of a weird thing to think about. Here's what I mean. So many times, Personally, I will not practice at all because I'm waiting for a four hour block of time to practice in. Just like when I was in the conservatory, I had that kind of time, I could practice for that amount of time, and it was great. I got really good with those four hour chunks. But nowadays, you know, I have a family, I, I have work that I have to do, so what do I have to remind myself constantly in order to continue to practice and keep that up in my life? and that is actually to practice less. I need to be comfortable practicing for really small amounts of time, not wait for that big chunk of time to come up because it really doesn't come up that often. And I also have to remind myself that if I commit to just a couple of minutes of practicing, that will then lead to maybe a half an hour of practicing. So sometimes the hardest part about going to the gym is getting your gym shoes on. Well, the same thing for practicing. Sometimes it's just hard to put your hands on the piano or put your saxophone together. So commit to a really small amount of time and go forward from there. Because even if you just practice for five minutes, that would still be better than zero minutes. Remember that, five minutes is still better than zero. Not just because you get your momentum going and you get some inertia to help you practice the next time, but it's just you actually get some time on your instrument, which is really, really valuable. So don't let practicing for a small amount of time prevent you from practicing at all. If you have trouble staying consistent and disciplined with your practicing, this rule, this little tip can really come in handy. You just have to commit to a super small amount of time and uh, go forward from there. If you do more, great. If you don't, that's fine too. At least you did something, whoa. So I'll leave it there, guys. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon in more videos for more music tips. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for the support. And again, Happy New Year. See you soon. Bye-bye.